Starting off at number 10, we have the nickname of the truthful one. Muhammad became a prophet at the age of 40. Prior to that, he lived a normal life. He conducted business, married, attended gatherings, and mingled with all types of people. One major characteristic that was apparent to all who interacted with him was his honesty. He was never known to have lied, and even those who rejected his message referred to him as the truthful one until he was officially known as the Prophet Muhammad. Up next, let's talk a little bit about his burial place. Unlike many previous prophets, Muhammad's place of death and burial is known. His marked grave is in the city of Medina, Saudi Arabia, at Islam's second holiest site known as the Prophet's Mosque. Muslims from around the world visit this mosque and the Prophet's grave. However, it's important to note that Muslims do not pray to the Prophet's grave, but rather they pray to Allah while facing the city of Mecca. Moving on to the Prophet's strong presence. The Prophet Muhammad's charismatic nature left a strong impact on all who met him. When silent, he was grave and dignified, and when he spoke, glory rose up and overcame him. He was the most beautiful of men and the most glorious. It is recorded that he was sweet of speech and articulate. His speech was like a string of cascading pearls measured so that none despaired of its length and no eye challenged him of brevity. In company, he was the most flourishing in appearance and the loveliest in power. People surrounded him, listening intently to the message. If he commanded something, they obeyed with eagerness and haste without a frown or complaint. Coming up at number seven, the Prophet was an orphan. The Prophet's father passed away before he was born and his mother also when he was six years old, leaving him an orphan. At the time, orphans were the lowest class in society as they were considered to lack protection. This left him vulnerable at such a young age and completely dependent on Allah. This experience allowed him to connect with the most destitute of people in society. The Quran reminds people to always care for the less fortunate, stating, Did he not find you an orphan and give you refuge? And he found you lost and guided you? And he found you poor and made you self-sufficient? So as for the orphan, do not oppress him. Up next, you might be surprised to find out that the Prophet was happy to help with chores. Prophet Muhammad lived in a time when men considered themselves to be too manly to do household chores. Aisha, the Prophet's wife, explained that he used to milk the goats, mend his sandals, and patch his own clothing. He was happy to be busy helping his wife and taking care of the home. When asked, what did the Prophet do in his household, Aisha replied, he used to keep himself busy serving his family and when it was time for prayers, he would go for it. And coming in at the halfway point today at fact number five, we see that Muhammad established animal rights. Prophet Muhammad prohibited animal abuse, saying that the one who kills an animal for sport is cursed, and chastising people who overloaded their horses or camels, telling them to fear Allah concerning these animals that cannot speak. He also taught that people can go to heaven for caring for animals. The Prophet said, a man felt very thirsty when he came across a well. He went down the well to quench his thirst. After he saw a dog panting and licking mud in excessive thirst, he thought, this dog is suffering as I was. So he gave the dog water. Allah thanked him for that deed and forgave him. The people said, O oh, Allah's apostle, is there a reward for us in serving the animals? And he replied, yes, 
there is a reward for serving any animate or living being. And it's no surprise that Muhammad also established women's rights. Prophet Muhammad introduced several revolutionary changes to the status of women of his time. He allowed women to inherit, taught that they were equal to men in the sight of Allah, prohibited adultery and abuse of women, and elevated the status of mothers as being greater than that of fathers, and much more. The Prophet consulted women and weighed their opinions seriously. Women prayed in mosques, sought knowledge, and were both teachers and students in the early period of Islamic history. The Prophet's close companion and second caliph, Umar, was corrected by a woman when he tried to limit the amount of dowry a woman could receive. He also appointed women in various governmental positions and officials in the markets of Medina. In his farewell sermon, he said, I order you to be good to women. The best of you is the best to his wives. Moving on to the fact that Muhammad was very forgiving of his enemies. Many people tried to harm the Prophet. They exiled him from Mecca, tortured and ended the lives of many followers, spread false rumors about him, and attempted to end his life and message. As the message of Islam grew, however, Muhammad and many Muslims returned to Mecca. The Meccans had committed many offenses against Muslims and the Prophet, but rather than seeking revenge, Muhammad entered Mecca with his head lowered in humbleness and he forgave all his enemies. He said to them, Today I say to you, as Joseph said to his brothers, this day there is no blame on you. Go your way, for you are free. And you might also be surprised to learn, for such as I was, that he was unlettered. Now, although the Quran is the greatest Arabic literary work, the Prophet Muhammad did not know how to read or write. When he became a prophet, he presented the Quran to people, and they were in awe of its unmatched linguistic beauty. They knew it could not be the words of a human, especially one who could not read or write. On several occasions, the Quran challenges people to produce something even similar to that of the Quran, stating, were all mankind to come together and wish to produce the likes of the Quran, they would never succeed, however much they aided each other. As well as, if you have doubts about the revelation we have sent down to our servant, then produce a single chapter like it and enlist whatever supporters you have other than God, if you truly think you can. If you cannot do this, and you will never, then beware of the fire prepared for the disbelievers whose fuel is men and stones. And coming in all the way down at fact number one about the Prophet Muhammad, he did not consider himself divine. Before the end of his life, the Prophet forbade worshipping or making idols of him. He educated them of his mortality and of being a simple man delivering the message of Allah. The declaration of the Islamic faith even highlights the fact that Muhammad was not divine, stating, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Furthermore, Muhammad said, O oh people, say what you have to say and do not allow Satan to deceive you. I am Muhammad, the slave of Allah and his messenger. I do not like you to raise me above the status at which I have been placed by Allah, noble and majestic is he.